Paige Evans for Scrapbook and Cards Today magazine and I am excited to show you how I embroider or hand stitch pattern papers. The first thing I do is go through a collection and figure out which paper I want to stitch. So this is my brand new Blooming Wild collection with American Crafts. There are 24 double-sided pattern papers and while I am very tempted to hand stitch all of them. I narrowed it down to, I think, six, seven, or eight options. So let me tell you why I think these would be good to embroider. For this page, I can easily envision poking holes across all of these lines and then stitching tone on tone with a back stitch or a chain link stitch to embroider this entire paper. This is paper nine. It has all of these colorful polka dots and I envision doing French knots through all of these polka dots to create a really fun and funky background. But I also want this layout to be spring themed. So this one doesn't necessarily scream spring to me. So let's move on. Paper 10 has stitching designs printed on it already. So I would poke holes by hand through the stitching designs and then stitch tone on tone. And I love the pastel rainbow colors of these stripes. And this paper is the B side of paper 11. So the front is super florally. This one would be fun to stitch, but also very time consuming and complicated. But on the back side, it has these stitching lines printed already on it. So I would poke holes and then do a back stitch through all of these. This one would also take upwards, I think of 30 hours or so, maybe to hand stitch. So let's, let's move on. This is paper number 12 and I love flowers. I think, I think I'm leaning towards this one, but let's th look through the rest of them. So for this paper, I would poke holes around each of the flowers, do a back stitch through, and then probably a French knot in the center. I'm gonna hold this one off to the side. I might be going with this one. It's very springy. I love flowers. I love all the colors and I think it's pretty manageable. This is paper 15 and it has a lot of stitching patterns printed on it already. So you could stitch it around the hearts and then you could stitch inside the squares using tone on tone thread. Paper 17 has stitching lines printed around these large floral letters. So you could poke holes and do a back stitch around those. Paper 20 has these pastel hearts. I'm also really leaning towards this one. You could pierce holes around the hearts and stitch through them. And then paper 23 is also a really good stitching option. Again, it has these stitching lines printed on it. So you could pierce holes down the lines and stitch tone on tone. But friends, I think I think I'm gonna go with this pattern paper. So let me grab the supplies that we need to begin prepping this paper for hand stitching. The next step is easy. Simply trim off the barcode strip and save it for a rainy day because the opposite side has the A side pattern printed on it. And I love using these scraps for other layouts. Next, you'll need a foam mat and a paper piercer. These are both from We Are Memory Keepers. Place the foam mat underneath. Now I'm going to zoom in so we can see it up close. In addition to the time it's going to take to actually do the hand stitching, piercing the holes is going to take some time too. So I am using the paper piercer and I'm just trying to figure out how many holes I want to make around each petal to get a curved shape. If you just pierce a hole here at the top of the petal, it's going to create a rectangle, or sorry, a triangular shape, but I want it to be more rounded. I also don't want my holes too close together, that way the paper would tear as I'm sewing. So I think there's about an eighth of an inch between the holes that I am piercing, and I do wanna make sure to get in the creases of the petals and I think in the 
creases and then two around the rounded parts will create a nice rounded flower. At least for this one, there are a few different sizes. And then I want a hole in the center so that I can do a French knot. Okay, so moving on to the next flower, a hole in the center starting at the point and then piercing holes about an eighth of an inch apart around the flowers, around the flower petals. Next, so for the ones that are on the edges, I am not going to stitch around the edges, but I'll go around as much of the flower as possible. So right here, I might just do one more, but then I will leave these parts un unpoked. And for little areas like this, where just a little bit is showing, I don't think I will do those. For this one, there's enough of it showing that I will pierce holes like so. And let's do one more. So pierce a hole in the center and then start piercing holes around the petals. Okay, so I am going to take some time to pierce all of the holes. Okay, friends, fast forward in time, about an hour and 15 minutes. That's how long it took me to pierce all of these holes. And now with these bigger flowers, sometimes I did add one at the very top of the petal. And that way, the stitching will just be a little bit cleaner, a little more tight together. And I can always add more, add more holes as I'm stitching you can't take them away. So let me finish piercing holes around this flower and then we'll move on to the next step. Here is my paper with all of the holes pierced. You might notice that I traced a four inch square in the center. That is where I plan to add my photo and I didn't want to spend the time stitching around these flowers. That's probably at least an hour's worth of hand stitching time right here. So I just traced a four inch square in the center and I will not stitch those flowers, but I did pierce the holes through every other flower. I might have missed some, which I will find along the way. If you're curious, here's what the back side looks like. Lots and lots of flowers to stitch. The next step is to find coordinating colors of thread. So once upon a time, I went to Joanne's stores and I bought every single color of embroidery thread that they have. And this just makes it really easy to match threads to my collections. So I have gone through and basically what I do is I hold the thread up against the flower and I feel like this purple is going to be great down here in this purple section. Here are all of the threads that I went and pulled through. So there are some darker yellows, there's some darker pinks, lighter yellows, greens, and I plan to stitch tone on tone. So let me thread a needle and start stitching a flower. To show you how to do the back stitch and a French knot, I'm going to stitch one of these purple flowers and I've chosen thread 3747 for the lighter area around the outside. Let's do this one right here. And for the French knot, number 3042. So to stitch one flower, I'm going to trim about a foot or 12 inches of thread and thread a needle. This is Prim Dritz size 22 needle and tie a knot at the opposite end. To do a back stitch, first you want to bring your needle up through a hole. Let's see, I'm going to do this one right here because the center is this kind of darker purple whereas the one next to it is more blue. And But the lighter flower thread color that I've chosen works for this one. So bring your needle 
up through a hole on the flower. It doesn't matter where you start. And then pull it taut. Don't pull it tight. If you pull it tight, you're going to tear your paper. Pass your needle back down through the next hole. I'm going to work my way clockwise around the flower. Pull the thread taut, not tight, again, or you'll tear. And then bring your needle up through the next hole. Now this next step is why it's called a back stitch. So you're going to bring your needle back through the previous hole. Bring your needle up through the next hole and back down through the previous hole. Up and out the next hole and then back down through the previous hole. Now it takes me about two to three minutes. I haven't timed it yet, but I'm guessing about two to three minutes to stitch, stitch each flower. And I'm guessing it's going to take about eight to 12 hours to stitch the entire background. I know that that is time consuming, but the results of hand stitching are some of my absolute favorite. The pages that I have completely embroidered or stitched are some of my favorites and I have them displayed on my layout wall in my office, in my happy scrappy place, my scrap room. And I just can't seem to put them into scrapbooks. Oops, that's not the right next hole. Here is the next hole. So maybe like fussy cutting, maybe hand stitching isn't your favorite, but to me, it relaxes me, it relieves stress, and best of all, I can park myself in front of the TV and binge watch shows, <laughs> let's be honest. That's one of my favorite reasons. So I'll probably just continue watching true crime or maybe I'll restart Pull Dark or my very favorite, which is Friends. Also, I actually, I wear a latex glove when I'm stitching to protect my fingers because the back end, the back end, I use my middle finger to push the needle through a lot. And by having that protective layer with the latex glove, it just helps my fingers not get sore. And my hands get pretty sweaty. And so the glove also helps not warp the paper. Almost done stitching the outer flower. So bring your needle up through the last hole. Bring it back down through the previous hole. Now, if you have enough thread remaining, you can continue stitching the next flower. For example, you can just bring it up through the next, the hole of the next flower and continue stitching. But I want to show you how to tie it off. So flip it over to the back side, pass your needle underneath a stitch, and then Bring your needle through the loop and pull it taut to tie a knot. Now I want to show you how to do the French knot. So flip it over to the previous side. There's the flower that we are stitching right there and the darker color of thread, remember was 3042. So I'm going to grab about eight inches, trim it off, Thread the needle, so I'm using the exact same needle. Thread, thread the needle, thread the needle. Tie a knot at the opposite end. And then to do the French knot, pass your needle up through the hole in the center and pull it taut. Don't pull it too tight or you'll pull the knot all the way through. Hold your needle parallel with the paper. Grab the thread with your left hand and wrap it around the needle twice. 
pierce your needle down through the hole. You want to be careful not to pierce it through the knot that you've made at the end of the thread. And use your left fingers to drag the wrapped threads down to meet the paper. And then you can release and pass your needle all the way through slowly so the thread doesn't knot up. And there you have your French knot. So I plan to stitch all of the flower petals first and then do the French knots last so that I can just continue doing the French knots. Here, I'll, since I still have thread remaining, I can bring my needle up through the next flower, wrap the thread around it twice, pass it back down, pull the knot down to the paper, and then pass your needle all the way through. So I will stitch all the petals and then do all of the French knots and I will come back and show you my progress along the way now and then. Wish me luck. <laughs> Hi friends, checking in. This is about 24 hours after I started this video, but not 24 hours of work. I cleaned most of the morning. My mom is visiting from Seattle tomorrow, so this is about two hours of stitching so far. So that's where we're at after one day. And it's just something that I get to work on here and there. So I will check in again tomorrow. All right, it's been a few days. My mom is in town now, so I've been working on this here and there. So here is a little progress. I think I started stitching on Wednesday and it is now Sunday in real time. Looks like I'm just over halfway. Just need to do the blue and greenish section. Uh, I think we're probably at about eight hours of stitching so far. But I am loving the way this is looking. I hope you do too and you are inspired. Okay, I'll be back in with the final update soon. Hello friends, it is now Monday morning and I have finished stitching the outlines of the flowers. I've done most of the French knots this is the last little section that I need to finish up doing the French knots. And then it will be time for the photo and embellishments. I've had a lot of fun working on this here and there over the past uh, nearly a week. And once I bring the camera out so you can see the full thing, I hope you will enjoy it too and be inspired. So let's finish stitching these French knots. Okay, so there is the last one. I'm going to flip it over. Oh, there you can see the backside and what it really looks like. Let me tie a knot to tie off my final bit of stitching. Let me zoom out so we can see the full thing. Here's what it looks like on the back. Lots and lots of messy stitching, but when we turn it over, ta-da! Okay, here is the finished page with this hand stitching using one of the papers from my new Blooming Wild collection. So right, I've left the center empty for a photo and minimal embellishments. I know for sure I'm not going to add very much because I don't want to cover up any of this hard work. So I am going to pick a photo and then we will finish up this page. Okay friends, with the background finished, it's time to add my photo and embellishments. So the photo is of me and my mom. While she was here, I was working on this background, so I thought it was fun to use a photo from the same time that I was making this. And remember, I didn't stitch the center because it's, I know I'm just going to cover it right up with the photo. And I'm just going to add a little bit of adhesive onto the back side so that I can tuck things underneath. Now I'm going to embellish just minimally because I really want the background to shine. I spent all this time stitching it. I want it to be the star of the show. 
So from the chipboard stickers from my Blooming Wild collection, the title is going to be Two of a Kind and placing it at the top. To balance it, I'm tucking a journaling spot underneath the bottom. And I'll write my journaling on it at the very end. Just want to figure out the placement of things first. And then I am going to trim a floral die cut in half. So I have a whole package of ephemera flower and leaf die cuts. I cut this one in half, tucking one half under the right side, the other half under the left side. There is a package of chipboard tiles. One size is two inches square and the other one is, I believe, one and a half. So I have taken one of the two inch squares and trimmed it into quarter triangles, quarter the size, to become fun photo corners. And then this way, since all of the background is very pastel, but my mom's dress is navy, the navy in these little photo corners brings out the navy in her dress. Next, I'm going to add even more die cuts. So I'll tuck a floral die cut up under the top and then just kind of tuck one down in here. Just trying to cover, her dress is very, very beautiful, but it is very dark and the rest of the page is light. So just trying to kind of blend it in, balance that flower on the right with another flower on the left. And this is kind of empty space in my photo. And then to finish it up, there is these puffy sentiment stickers and all across them throughout some of the words, there are puffy flower stickers that are teeny tiny. So I'll just add them here and there to really drive home the floral theme. Even though this picture was taken in the middle of winter with tons of snow on the ground, our dresses have florals all over them. So it works. Flowers for the win. I must have flowers always and always. Okay. Everything is now glued in place and I drew journal journaling lines with a purple pen and wrote journaling there at the bottom. Let me bring it up close once again so you can see all of the details. Hand stitched pages are some of my favorite. I keep them on my display wall in my scrapbook room, sometimes for years. In fact, let me show you some of the hand-stitched pages that I have done over the course of a few years. Whenever I talk about embroidering a layout, I always bring in this example. I think this is my favorite, favorite layout of all time. It's using my Bloom Street collection. So this is my Blooming Wild collection, which is very, very similar in color and style to Bloom Street, and that was the idea. We just kind of wanted a part two. And for this one, I used chain link stitches, more French knots and back stitches, and just stitched the floral patterns on the pattern paper. This next page, the paper is from my Wonders collection, and it's tiled, so I just <laughs> I stitched over every design and I thought it was going to be simple. I was finding a paper to embroider for International Scrapbook Day one year and I was like, oh, this one won't take very long. It's very simplistic. Uh, like two days later, 48 hours later, but again, I just really, really love the final look. This next page is from my Bungalow Lane collection. So it looks like a quilt design. It's just a bunch of triangles. And I stitched tone on tone around each of the triangles to really enhance the quilt theme. This next page, I have two more to show you. This one actually isn't an embroidered background. What I mean by that, I mean it is hand stitched, but the stars I did the pattern. So my machine 
I used it. I designed a cut file, the machine cut all the holes, and then I stitched tone on tone. So you can see where it's pink on the background, I used pink thread. Where it's red on the background, I used red thread. This last example is using my, uh, what collection is this? Garden Shop. Garden Shop collection. This was actually made for the winter 2022 issue of Scrapbooking Cards Today. So I stitched around the chevrons using the same color of thread. So those are my examples of hand-stitched pages. They are some of my favorite. I, I kind of just want to hang them all up on my wall and oops, drop my glue. Here is this layout, which I made for the spring 2023 issue of Scrapbooking Cards Today magazine. So be sure to check it out. Let me know if you have any questions and I will see you again soon. Have a great day.